ان الحمد لله خالق الوجود من العدم وجاعل النور من الظلم ومخرج الصبر من الالم وملقي التوبه على الندم فنشكره على المصائب كما نشكره على النعم ونصلي على رسوله الاكرم ذي الشرف الاشم والنور الاتم والكتاب المحكم وكمال النبيين والخاتم سيد ولد ادم الذي بشر به عيسى بن مريم ودعا لبعثته ابراهيم عليه السلام حين كان يرفع قواعد بيت الله المحرم فصلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اتباعه خير الامم الذي بار الذين بارك الله بهم كافه الناس العرب منهم والعجم فالحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا والحمد لله الذي انزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا والحمد لله الذي نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ به من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله ارسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا ثم اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وان شر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار يقول سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد نقول اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم واذا سالك عبادي عني فاني قريب اجيب دعوه الداعي اذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي والله ما ثبتنا عند الموت بلا اله الا الله والله ما جعلنا من الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر امين يا رب العالمين In this brief moments that I have to share with you I will talk to you about just one ayah of the Quran This is the ayah about dua about making dua to Allah And this ayah occurs in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah after Allah talks about the month of Ramadan And there is a connection between the subject matter of the month of Ramadan and dua Allah is teaching us one of the best things you can do in Ramadan is to make dua to him and to make dua that is full of hope that we call on Allah and we expect him to answer our dua we're supposed to be optimistic and positive when we make dua to Allah but i wanted to describe to you something so beautiful about dua that Allah teaches us in this ayah there are many many lessons here and i'll try to capture as many of them as i can in the half hour or less that i have with you Allah azza wa jalla begins he says wa idha sa'alaka ibadi anni as i recited the arabic to you When my slave asks you about me, that's how it's translated. When my slaves, actually the plural, when my slaves ask you about me, fa inni qareeb than I am near. You see, let's stop here for a second and think about the word idha. Idha in Arabic it means when, when, and it does not mean if. There's a difference between saying idha and in. Allah did not say wa in sa'alaka ibadi anni. Qal wa idha sa'alaka ibadi anni. There's a difference. So the difference has to be understood. I'll give you an example. When a son goes away from the mother, he travels for work, he gets a job in another country, or he's going to university and college in a different country, and the mother misses him. The mother does not say, "If my son comes back, I will be so happy." She doesn't say that. She says, "When my son comes back, I will be happy." She does not say, "If" when they're on your family's on the plane they're on the plane they, the plane hasn't landed yet you don't say if they land i'll take care of them you say when they land i'll take care of them why is that because you expect something if you say if it means you have no hope maybe you think there's something bad going to happen 
If you say, if, the mother says, if my son comes back from college, I'll be so happy. She's thinking maybe he's not going to come back. So she says, when? When she is sure and she's expecting for her son to come back. Allah Azza wa Jalla in the ayah did not say, if my slave asks you, meaning asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah is talking about you and me, asking questions about him. But he doesn't say, if they ask, tell them. He said, when they ask. When, when, they, when my slaves ask. Now what does that mean for us? That means Allah is expecting from you and me to ask about Him. He's expecting it from us. He's waiting for us to ask about Him. SubhanAllah. That's in the, inside the word idha. Then there's idha sa'alak. It's not idha yas'aluk. In the Qur'an after idha, you can find the present tense and the past tense. And the present tense means something that happens over and over again, like إِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِ آيَاتُنَا It's used. But سَأَلَى is not إِذَا يَسْأَلُوا إِذَا سَأَلَى is what's called الْفِعْلُ الْمَاضِي It's the past tense. Now why is that important? Allah is waiting for you to ask at least once. Just ask Him at least once. So He's not even expecting you to go and ask more, many, many, many times. At least ask one time, He's still waiting for you and me. SubhanAllah. You know, there are people that you know that are becoming far away from Allah's deen. Maybe they're in your family. There are people who make, don't make salat anymore. There are people who stop making istighfar, they stop making tawbah. There are people that are maybe doing some haram things and you know about it. And you talk to them and you get angry. And when you get angry with them, sometimes they think Allah is angry with them too. But Allah Azza wa Jal does not give up on people. He doesn't give up on people. Even those people, if they can come one time, just ask about Allah, just want to learn from, about Allah. إِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي Then it's سَأَلَكَ Meaning we go to Rasulullah wasallam to ask. This is also important. What should we learn about Allah? This is why Allah taught, sent us a teacher wasallam. We have to learn about Allah from His Messenger wasallam, And His Messenger will give not only us his own words, the hadith, but he'll also give us the word of Allah, the Qur'an. So asking the messenger is actually when we are reciting Qur'an, we're fulfilling the ayah. Because these ayat came when somebody asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You can think of it like this. Even the ayat of the Qur'an, part of them, they are the result of a dua. Because somebody came and asked about Allah and then the ayah came down. So even the greatest gift of humanity, the Qur'an, is the result of the dua of someone coming, or a question of a sahabi coming to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is wa'idha sa'alaka. Then it's ibadi. Wa'idha is important to understand. When my slaves, plural, all of us, ask. Now I have been a teacher in my life. And when you are a teacher, and you have students, you cannot ask, all the students cannot ask a question at the same time. They can't do it. You have to pick one at a time. And even if I try to answer the question, I can only answer one question at a time. And sometimes, the student is waiting, he's raising his hand, asking a question, but I pick someone else, I pick someone else, I pick someone else, and I don't even get to him. I don't even get to his question. Because there's only one of me, and there's a hundred of them, there's twenty of them, there's fifty of them. If I wanted to speak to every one of you today for one minute, <laughs> it's impossible. That's impossible. There's a thousand of you here. There's a thousand minutes. It's impossible. I can't do it. Because there's only one of me and there's lots of you. Allah Azza wa Jalla is telling us in this ayah that if many slaves come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the same time asking him, maybe even he cannot answer them. And maybe even he can't even get back to them with the answer. So Allah Azza wa Jalla removes the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the ayah. So he does not say, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَقُلْ لَهُمْ إِنِّي قَرِيبٌ No, 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 no. When my slaves ask you about me, then go and tell them I am near. Because they asked the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. If you ask the Prophet, then the answer should come from the Prophet himself alayhi salatu wa salam. Not in this ayah. Allah says, they came and asked you, but I will answer them myself. I will answer them myself. It's incredible. What we are learning is Allah wants to communicate with you directly. He wants to talk to you directly. This is what Qur'an is. Allah is talking to you directly. He wants to speak with you. He wants to tell you Himself. 
He doesn't want you to learn from somewhere else, someone else. He wants you to learn from him first. And what does he tell you? فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ No doubt about it, I am near. Then no doubt about it, I am near. In other words, this is not me telling you that Allah is near. It's not even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling you that Allah is near. Allah Himself is talking to you and saying Allah is near. He's telling it to you. And He does not say, إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَرِيب Allah is near. He says, إِنِّي قَرِيب إِنِّي قَرِيب I, no doubt, I am near. SubhanAllah. When He says I in the Qur'an, when Ana is used in the Qur'an, it is used either when Allah is extremely angry, or it is used when Allah has an extreme love. Extreme love. So either you will find the word ana in the Quran like inni u'adhibuhu adhaban la u'adhibuhu ahadan min al-alamin I will torture him with a torture that I have never tortured anybody with The toughest ayat of Quran will have ana or Allah will use ana in the ayat that have the most extreme love from him So he says wa ana at-tawwabur rahim atubu alayhim You know I will accept their tawbah I, when Allah uses ana, He doesn't use nahnu, He doesn't use huwa, He uses I for Himself, I. Then it is actually an expression of Allah's love. In this ayah, Allah is already telling you that He has extreme love for you. And He's talking to you directly. You say, if you say, إِنَّ اللَّهَ قريب, Allah is near, then it says information. But if Allah says, I am near, that means He's directly addressing you. He's engaging you in conversation. And then He says something so beautiful. First of all, the slave came to ask about him. And Allah, Allah could have told us so many things about him. Allah, know, Allah has so many names. Allah has so many, so many attributes. Asma'ul Husna. Allah has the most beautiful names. But if somebody wants to learn about Allah, in this ayah, Allah says, the first thing you need to know is that no doubt about it, I am near. So near that I can talk to you. I am so near that I can talk to you. That's how close I am to you. You and I have to understand the closeness of Allah in this ayah. فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Then people make dua. And people make dua and they think, maybe Allah will listen. Maybe Allah will respond. But you know, I'm not a good Muslim. I do a lot of bad things. So my dua, 50% chance. Maybe 5%. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't work. Listen to the ayah carefully. Allah says, Ujibu. Ujibu which is translated, I answer, I respond. But it's different from astajibu. When in Arabic you say astajibu, it could be that you respond, but you're trying to respond. Or you respond over time, not right away, over time. But when you say ujibu, then al fawr, it's immediate, he responds right away. You ask him for something, and he gives you the answer when? Immediately, that's inside the word ujibu. Now why is that important? You know when you speak to somebody important, or you send someone an email, if you are working in a company and you send the president of the company an email, does he answer your email right away? No. I'm in a meeting right now, I'm busy, four days later you get a response. Maybe you never get a response. If you talk to somebody important, it's not easy to go and just meet with someone important, you have to get an appointment. And you have a question for them and they say, I'll get back to you. I don't have time right now. We do this all the time, don't we? Allah Azza wa Jal is telling you, you ask Him and He will respond immediately. Right away. But you know, it's also about connections. It's also about connections. Maybe Allah responds immediately to some people, but He does not respond to other people. Allah says, Ujibu da'wata da'i. These are some of the most beautiful words in the entire Qur'an. They are such beautiful words. I respond immediately to da'wah. Da'wah, not du'a ad-da'i, da'wah ad-da'i. Da'wah is different from du'a. Du'a is something that happens all the time. Da'wah, this is called masdar marra. It's one single du'a. Allah is talking about a man and a woman who never makes du'a. He only made dua one time. He never made, he only made dua one time. Now can you imagine somebody who makes dua only to Allah one time, Allah can say to him, where were you in Ramadan? 
Where were you your whole life? Why should I answer you? You don't make salah, you don't listen to me, I should not listen to you. Allah in this ayah, subhanallah, ar-Rahman. He says, the one who made dua one time. And it's da'wah of who? Da'wah the, the, the One time dua of the one who made a dua. Allah did not say the dua of a good person, the dua of a muttaqi, the dua of a abid, the dua of a muhsin, someone who does excellent in Islam, the dua of the alim. No, no, no. Anybody who makes dua. Any of you that makes dua. The only qualification is you are engaged in the act of dua. The other incredible thing here is, I mean, I used to work, when I used to work in a, a, a company, our, there were 600 employees in the company. And when the CEO walks by, the president of the company walks by, does he know everybody's name? No. He doesn't know everybody's name. And if, like I said before, if you send him a request or ask him a question, is he going to get back to everyone? No. Forget about answering your question, he doesn't even remember your name. You and I, all the, cre all the believers on this earth, all the believers on this earth, and actually all human beings that are asking for guidance, even if they're not Muslim, they turn to someone above and they say, God, if you're there, please guide me. I need your help. Even they, any human being on this earth, Allah Azza wa Jalla does not say about them that they are just anybody, I don't know their name. He said, Ad-da'i. Lam on it. Ad-da'i. Lam at ta'rif. As though Allah knows that person. You are special to Allah. You are specific to Allah. He knows you and He knows your dua. In this expression, Allah is telling us, He will respond to you, not only because He knows you, He knows your specific dua. And unlike anyone else, for anyone else, you have to make an appointment, and if you miss the appointment, too bad for you. You cannot get in. Like for example, I had to go to a specialist for one of my children, I had to go to a doctor. But he's a specialist, so he gets booked six months. You get an appointment six months later. And if you are 10 minutes late to the appointment, you have to wait another six months. You don't get to see him. How do we make an appointment with Allah? Some people ask the question, what's the best time to make dua? That's the question, when should I make dua? What's a good time Allah will listen? Allah answers in this ayah. He says, Ujibu da'wata da'i idha da'ani. Whenever he calls me, whenever he calls me, I will respond immediately to his call. I will respond immediately. Subhanallah. What are we waiting for? Why are we so lazy in making dua? Allah on the one hand is waiting for you to respond. Allah on the other hand is saying, it doesn't matter what you did in the past, just make dua to me. Just come back and ask me. I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you. This is Allah's promise in this beautiful ayah. But He see, gave such a beautiful offer to you and me. And at the end of it, He said, okay, this is what I will do for you. Now here's what you can do for Allah. Allah is making Himself available to you and me for dua. But what does He want from you and me? It's the, uh, that's the conclusion of the ayah. He says, فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي I am going to respond to them immediately. At least they should try to answer me. So he didn't say, فَلْيُجِيبُوا لِي They should answer me completely and immediately. No, at least try to answer Allah. Meaning just like you are asking Allah something, Allah is also asking you something. You are asking Allah for money, you're asking Allah for health, you're asking Allah for marriage, you're asking Allah for education, you're asking Allah for things in your life, Allah is also asking you some things. At least try to answer Allah. At least try. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي Then they should try to answer me. I answer them immediately, they should at least give it some attempt. وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي They should answer me and they should believe me. They should have some faith in me. They should trust me. When Allah asks you to do something, it's not because it's bad for you. It's not because it's gonna put you in difficulty. Ramadan is coming in a week. It's gonna be hot. It's not gonna be an easy Ramadan. Not in Malaysia. <laughs> and not in Texas where I come from. And now I was just last week I was in England and it's not gonna be easy in England because they have Isha at 11.30 and Fajr at 2.20. It's not gonna be an easy Ramadan. 
But when Allah gave Ramadan and He gave us fasting, He said, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرِ He said He wants things to be easy for you. He wants ease for you. He does not want difficulty for you. Ya Allah, I believe you. I believe you. The sun is hot. I am sweating. I am thirsty. I am hungry. But I believe when you say that you want things to be easy for me. And you don't want things to be difficult for me. I believe you. Allah says they should answer me and they should believe me. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي We have to believe Allah. We have to believe in Allah and we have to believe Allah. Those are the, both of the meanings. Believing in Allah means Allah exists, fine. But believing Allah, believing Allah, that you have faith in Him, لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ So that these people can be set on the straight way. So they can do the right thing, subhanAllah. Now in this ayah, this ayah of dua, one of the things that I wanted to highlight before you, when, what does it mean, فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي Then you should try to respond to me too. You see, we, you and I, we have to look out for the few things that make our dua useless. Allah wants to answer your dua and Allah wants to answer my dua. He wants to answer our dua and He's ready to answer it anytime. Anytime. But still we know that there is sometimes a special dua. There's a dua that you make in Ramadan, it's special. There's dua you're making in the middle of the night, it's special. There's dua you're making standing at the Kaaba, it's special. There's dua you're making when you're sitting in Arafat, it's special. It's a special occasion for dua. So even though Allah will answer your dua all the time, there are some special times and special places for dua. But the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam describes this person who goes to the most special place. He goes to the Kaaba. He goes to the house of Allah. And he's traveled thousands of miles. And he's making dua to Allah. But his food, where he earns his money, his clothing, وَمَلْبَسُهُ حَرَامٌ وَمَتْعَمُهُ حَرَامٌ What he eats is haram. What he wears is haram. Now the ihram is not haram, it's not silk. So what does it mean that his clothing is haram? The money that he used to buy the ihram is not coming from a halal place. He's eating halal food, he's eating the biha halal food. But the money he used to buy that food is not halal money. So the food is haram too. فَأَنَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لَهُ How can he get answered? How can that person get answered? SubhanAllah. On the one hand, Allah wants to answer you, and Allah wants to answer me. Allah is waiting for your dua, and Allah is waiting for my dua. Allah is saying, forget what happened in the past, just make tawbah and come back to Him. You don't have to be a alim or a scholar or a abid, anything. Just turn back to me right now. You don't even have to have a lot of knowledge. You don't have to know Arabic. If you don't know Arabic, you can make dua in Malay. You can make it in English. Just make dua to Allah. Just go back to Him. Just that much. But you know what? You first have to get away from, at least answer Him a little bit. Get away from things that He hates. That He does not like for you. And some, this, this is important for us to understand why is it that Allah says He wants ease for you? Because sometimes haram money is easy. It's a lot easier than halal money. Haram money is available. It's accessible. It's so easy to get. And then you don't take it and the halal money is little bit and the haram money is a lot. So you want to go for it. Nobody will find out. It's just between you and nobody else. You think, you know, you know yes, Allah will be angry, but I'll just make some extra salat in Ramadan, I'll be fine. You know, I'll get away with it. So you don't think about it twice. For those of you that are running businesses, if you're cheating your customer, for those of you that have jobs and you're not doing your work, when your boss is, your, your boss is not there, you're in the office by yourself, and you're sitting there playing video games instead of doing your work. Is that halal? Is that you earning your money? Does he know what you're doing? Is that what he paid you for? You know? We have to ask ourselves these questions. When your boss is there, then you show up to work on time. When your boss is on vacation, you're also on vacation, you don't show up. Right? This isn't, this, this isn't the way of a Muslim. 
Allah Azza wa Jal expects that He will answer your dua, but you have to do what He expects too. You have to do the right thing. You have to earn your money the halal way. And this is not just about people who earn money from selling, you know, alcohol or drugs or whatever else. It's also for people who cheat, who lie, who are dishonest, who take bribes. This is also a haram way of making money. And this, if you do these things, then your dua, you can make dua all night. You're blocking your own dua. Allah is not preventing your dua, you're preventing your own dua. You are disqualifying yourself. Why would you do that to yourself? When Allah is waiting, His invitation is open. So this Ramadan, as this Ramadan approaches, let's you and I make this Ramadan not just about our ibadat to Allah, which are important. We're gonna do more ibadah to Allah than any other time of the year in Ramadan. But this Ramadan, we also make a Ramadan of changing the way we, we practice our work, changing the way we earn our money, changing the way how, how honest we are with our business partner, with our customer, with our co-worker, with our boss, with our employees. We have to change these things because we have to earn Allah's dua. And wallahi, there are so many of us, nobody can check. Nobody will know. If you're cheating, nobody will find out. The government will not find out. Your, your company will not find out. The only one who knows is you and Allah. It's the only one who knows. So you have to ask yourself a question. Is the dua getting accepted by Allah? Is you being able to ask Allah for rizq? for guidance, for provision, for health, for your family, for your parents, for your children. Is that dua worth it or no? Is the money worth more? Is the haram money worth more? Is the cheating worth more? Is the bribery worth more? You have to ask yourself that question, I have to ask myself that question. I sincerely beg Allah Azza wa Jal that He makes us a people who earn halal, pure rizq for His sake that Allah removes all of the impurities from our money. That Allah Azza wa gives us so much barakah in our rizq, that as a result of that rizq, our du'as are accepted by Him. And that Allah Azza wa Jal give us the ability to make sincere ibadah to Him, especially in the month of Ramadan that is coming, that Allah prepare us properly in our mu'amalat, in our dealings with other people, and also in our relationship with Him. Wallahi, إِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ in this, in this incredible ayah, I just want to, I want to end with what I concluded with. You and I get a chance to meet, we don't get a chance to meet. We get a chance to talk, we don't get a chance to talk. But you can talk whenever you want to Allah. You can turn whenever you want to Allah. You and I will become close and far, but someone who will always be close to you is Allah. Your mother and father may not be close to you forever. Your children may not be close to you forever, but Allah will always be close to you. So be loyal to that relationship. We just have to be reminded of it. May Allah make us of those who remember that Allah is near all the time. That Allah is near all the time. You know, I, since I have one minute, I'll just share one more example with you, just so it sticks in your head. Young men, young people, when they're spending time with each other, when they're hanging out, they tend to use bad language. The young men, when they're sitting together in a restaurant, talking, making jokes, they use bad language. And one of the young men's father walks in. The father walks in, and all of a sudden, he stops. He starts doing dhikr. He changes immediately. He becomes someone else. Why? Because the father is right there. The father is near. The father goes away, he goes back. Goes back to the same. Some of you drive like crazy. You're crazy. You see a police car, what happens? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. You calm down, you slow down, you stop properly. You become a human again when the police is near. The son becomes a human again when the father is near. He changes, the behavior changes. Your, the way you talk changes, the way you sit changes, the way you drive changes. Yes no, or no? You're sitting, relaxing at work. Your boss walks in, all of a sudden it's, sit up straight. You change. All of this because you know that they are near. Yes? Because the father is near, or the policeman is near, or the boss is near, you change. Allah says about Himself, He is near. I am near, Allah is saying to you and me. 
If we only remember that, our behavior will change. The problem is we don't remember it. We say it one time, we don't think about it, we forget, and so our behavior doesn't change. You and I have to become people who truly remember Allah is near, and wallahi, wallahi, the way we talk, the way we walk, the way we spend, and the way we earn will change. It will change. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us of those who are able to make good changes in their life because of His recognition and because of, he, because of Him being near. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us of people of Ihsan. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyyakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim.